Lesson 4.3, Multiplication with Decimals and Whole Numbers, we're going to be using properties and place value. We can multiply a decimal and a whole number by using properties to find partial products and their sum. We can use place value to multiply the digits as if they were all whole numbers, then count the decimal places, the hops, in the factors for the amount of decimal places, the hops, in the product. We have 3 times 1 and 8 tenths. We learned in video 4.2, which is linked in the description, that we can model decimal multiplication to find a product. We use a square for a whole, 1. We use a line for a tenth. We have 1 and 8 tenths 3 times. We regroup 10 tenths as 1 whole. We cross it out and draw our one hole. We can regroup another 10 tenths as one hole and cross it out. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 whole and 4 tenths remaining. It's 5 and 4 tenths. 3 times 1 and 8 tenths, we can round the decimal to a whole number. It would round to 2. 8 tells the 1 to go up to a 2, then it falls off the end. We can estimate the product. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. That means 3 times 1 and 8 tenths is about 6. It's approximately 6. And we learned that this symbol is used for approximately. It's called a double tilde. And we can write it's approximately 6. We can use the distributive property to multiply decimals by whole numbers. We have 3 times 1 and 8 tenths. That's equal to 3 times 1 plus 3 times 8 tenths. So remember the distributive property. The 3 would be like the mother bird, and the numbers within the parentheses would be her babies, and she's feeding each one. So she has to go to each one, so they both get food. They, take, they each get multiplied by 3. We have 3 times 1 plus 3 times 8 tenths, 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 8 tenths is 2 and 4 tenths. And these would be our partial products. We add the partial products and get 5 and 4 tenths. So we distribute the 3 to multiply by 1, then to multiply by 8 tenths, and then we add the partial products. So we can use partial products to multiply a decimal by a whole number. We have our same problem, 3 times 1 and 8 tenths. We just multiply 3 times this 8, and we get a 24. And there's one decimal place here, so we have one decimal here, so it's 2 and 4 tenths. 3 times 8 tenths is 24 tenths, regrouped as 2 ones and 4 tenths. Now we multiply 3 times 1 whole, and that's equal to 3 whole, so it goes in this place value with the whole numbers. We add our partial products, 2 and 4 tenths and 3 whole, and we get 5 and 4 tenths. To use place value patterns, we multiply the decimal digits as if they are whole numbers. Then we count all the decimal places in the factors, the hops. And the total amount of decimal place values, those hops in the factors, will be the amount of decimal place values, the hops, in the product. We have 3 times 1 and 8 tenths. We have one hop here. We start on the right side and we count how many hops there are. There's one hop to the decimal place here. This is a whole number 3, so it doesn't have any hops. That means our product is going to have one hop. If we're doing 1 and 82 hundredths times 3, we have one, two hops in the factor. There's none here, so we just have a total of two hops in the factors. That means there's going to be two hops in the product. So we're going to have 5 and 46 hundredths. If we multiply 1 and 82 hundredths times 3 tenths, now this has two decimal hops and this has one decimal hop. That's a total of three hops. We multiply 
just as if we were multiplying whole numbers, 182 times 3. And we write our numbers down and then count the hops. One, two, three decimal hops. The decimal point will go here on the left side of the 5. It's equal to 546 thousandths. Here we have 5 times 3 and 7 tenths. Using the distributive property, just like the mother bird feeding her babies in the parentheses nest, we have 5 times 3 plus 5 times 7 tenths. And we know the product will be greater than 5 whole because we have a 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 7 tenths is 35 tenths that we regroup as 3 and 5 tenths. This 5 times 3 is greater than the factor 5, so we know the product will be greater than the factor 5. We add the partial products, and we get 18 and 5 tenths. 4 times 7 tenths will have a product that is less than the factor 4, because 4 times 1 is equal to 4, and 7 tenths is less than 1. So our product is going to be less than this 4. 4 times 7 tenths is equal to 28 tenths. We draw 7 tenths 4 times, we get 28 tenths, and we regroup 20 tenths as 2 whole, and there's 8 tenths remaining, it's equal to 2 and 8 tenths. When only one factor has decimal place values, the product will have as many decimal place values as that one factor. We have a factor 2 and 63 hundredths that has decimal place values. It's in the hundredths. And the 4 is a whole number, so this is the only one with decimal place values. We multiply it just as if we were multiplying 263 times 4 as whole numbers, and however many decimal place values that one factor has will be the number of decimal place values in the product, because it's the only factor with decimal points. So the only factor, 2 and 63 hundredths, has a decimal place value as hundredths, so the product will be hundredths. And it's like I said before, the total number of hops in the factors, there's one, two, there's none here, so that's a total of two, that will be the amount of hops in the product. There'll be two. And notice that we have our decimal points lined up nice and neat. Here we have 100 times 42 hundredths. When we multiply a decimal by 100, the decimal point moves two places to the right. It's equal to 42. That's a whole number. Then, if we multiply that product, the 42, by 100th, the decimal point moves two places to the left. We'll have the original factor, 42 hundredths. Multiplying by 100th is the same as dividing by 100. We have one hundredth times three hundred, we're going to move the decimal point one, two hops over, it's equal to three whole. If we have three hundred divided by one hundred, that's equal to three whole. So multiplying by one hundredth is the same as dividing by one hundred. A student said that four times six dollars and twenty-nine cents is two hundred fifty-one dollars and sixty cents. And just by looking at this equation, how can we tell that the student has a wrong answer? So think, we have 4 times $6.29, and 4 times 6 whole is equal to 24, so 4 times $6 is equal to $24. And the product will be closer to $24, not $251.60. So what is the actual product? We can multiply these just as if it were all whole numbers, then we can count the decimal hops. 4 times 9 is 36. We regroup the 3 and write the 6 down. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 more is 9, 10, 11. We regroup the 1 and write the 1 in the tenths place. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 more is 25. There's two decimal hops in the factor. We put two decimal hops in the product. We have 25 
and sixteen hundredths, and because it's a money amount, we write a dollar sign, and it's twenty-five dollars and sixteen cents. Emma rides her bike a total of four and ninety-two hundredths miles to and from school. How many miles will she ride in five days? So think, she rides four and ninety-two hundredths miles five times for the five days. Would it be A, B, C, or D? We can round and estimate four and ninety-two hundredths if we round to the closest once place, the nine tells the four to go up to a five, and then the nine and the two are dropped off, so it rounds to the whole number five. And five times five is equal to 25. So the product is close to 25. Four and 92 hundredths times five is approximately 25. So it's not 2,460, it's not 246. We have 24 and 6 tenths, that's close to 25, or we have 2 and 46 hundredths. The choice that's the closest to 25 would be C. If you said C, you're correct. And, like I always say, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in their correct column. So we can multiply decimals and use our sheet of paper turned sideways to help us keep our place values straight. So be very careful as you multiply decimals. You want to make sure that you count the number of decimal hops in all the factors, and that total amount of decimal hops will be how many decimal hops, decimal place values, in the product. Our next lesson, 4.4, we're going to multiply decimals and whole numbers using expanded form and place value. I hope I'll see you there. I hope you have a great day. Hit the like button if you can, and don't forget to check the description for other videos. Bye!